All right, guys and girls, welcome to another episode of Astral Auto Repairs. Can you dig it? All right, check it out. Today we got a 2000 Dodge Ram 1500. The van. All right, this car, this van got the six on it. When you first look at it, you think it's a 318 or what was the other one, the 360? But this one got the six. Customer said it's very good. All right, but today what I'm going to show you how to do is replace the front rotors and brake pads. There are going to be a lot of neat tricks in this, so you definitely want to pay attention to this video. All right, so let's get this car jacked up. I get to use a lot of new tools. I get to use my new jack from Harbor Freight, the bearing packer, and a grease gun, all brand new. Check that out. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys and girls, we're back. All right, number one, safety is important. As you can see, we got our hydraulic jack jacked up in the middle of the chassis, jacked the vehicle up, and we set two jack stands on each side of it lowered it down but still keep our hydraulic jack in places added security now you know more than likely the jack stands are going to hold this truck with no vent no problem at all but we leave that there just in case all right the first thing we're going to do is let's take off our wheels got the oh, got the ram emblem on there all right we got five lugs three quarter or 19 millimeter and what i'm going to be do, using is my 19 millimeter deep half inch drive with my air gun and I'm going to show you taking off one wheel and then you're going to go and take off the other one by yourself taking them off it doesn't matter you can go circle whatever way you want but putting it back on you want to follow a special procedure of tightening these wheels back up and I'll show you once we put them back on All right, we're gonna get this wheel off, and we're gonna take the other one off. And then what I want you to do is, we're gonna start on this side. So take the steering wheel and turn your wheel all the way to the right. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, girls, we're back. Let's get this done. You notice I got the wheel all the way to the right. Now, before we take these calipers off, if you look closely inside there, you'll see those right there, those are caliper pistons. These are the back housings to them. Now we're gonna have to push those pistons back to put our new uh, brake pads and everything on. But before you do that, what you wanna do is go up to the vehicle, remove the cap to the master cylinder. Why you wanna do that? Because when you push those calipers back, fluid is gonna push back through the master cylinder. And a lot of new master cylinders have like butterfly valves, one-way valves. So if you try to push that brake pads with, <laughs> push them brake pads back, without removing that cap to release that pressure, you're gonna mess that master cylinder up. Then when you go to step on the brakes, you ain't gonna have no brakes, all right? Now, the next thing you wanna do is, you notice the brake fluid level is right about there. So when we start pushing these calipers back, fluid's gonna to come to the top, and eventually it's gonna spill over, and you got a big mess everywhere, and everything's not professionally done at all. So what you wanna do, grab you some paper towels. We got here, we got Bounty, the quicker picker up. What we're going to do is grab a few of them, not rags, you want to get some paper towels because they soak up the brake, brake fluid quick. You want to take it, you want to push it just like that. So as you push it back, the paper towel is thin enough that it'll let the air come out, but it'll also soak up the brake fluid coming out of here. So we're good to go with that. Now, let's get to some tips and tricks. Two ways of moving back those pistons. One. We can remove the caliper, turn it over, and get us a C-clamp and push them back. Or two, I'm gonna show you a nice quick way. What you do, and it doesn't matter on this one anyway, but what you do, take you a screwdriver, a flat screwdriver. Now this is this piston, this caliper is what you call dual piston. It has two of them. A lot of them only has one. So with the dual piston, what you wanna do is get your screwdriver right in between the brake pad and the rotor. And what you wanna do is pry back slowly enough get that push that piston right back and you can see that piston going back now the problem with this is what you got to do is get that to stay in there just like that get you another screwdriver put it in there and let that hold it into place while you get your other screwdriver and push the other one back 
And while you're pushing that back, you come to the top. Make sure your brake fluid is still good. As soon as it starts getting up here, wet, you want to change it out. All right, so let's go back over here. Set you up. And now what I'm going to do is get my other screwdriver and push that into there. And at the same time now, I can slowly push back those pistons. Just great. Slowly push them back. And what I'm gonna do is stop for a moment. Come to the top. Take a look at that. Oh yeah, yeah, we got enough on. We're perfect. And you want to push back as much as you can. Sometimes you might want to get a pair of uh, well not a pair, but a, a pry bar, because the pry bar is bigger. But most of the time the screwdriver will work. Matter of fact guys, I'm gonna get me a... Well actually no, it's, it's going back. I like the pry bar idea better once you get it, get it open enough. There we go. Alright, I got one all the way back. As far as it will go, what I'm gonna do take my little one be able to hold that one in place. Take my big one and bring the top one back. Now I'm going to show you, this is one method on this side. On the other side, I'm going to show you the C-clamp way. All right, we got those things back. We are good to go. The next thing you got to take off this caliper, you're going to have two Torx bolts. Right in the back. See, you can see that there's one and there's two. You gotta take take those off to get this caliper off. Oops, let me get over here. All right, what you got is a T47 Torx, 3H drive, or a 3H drive ratchet, and you want to make sure that Torx is in there correctly. Make sure it's firmly in there because Torx sockets are easily stripped out. Then you want to take your time and just loosen it up just like that. Great. We got the top one. Now let's get to our bottom one. Great. Let's get those two bolts out so we can take that caliper off. Right back. All right, guys, we're back. We've got the bolts out of the caliper. Take your caliper. Just walk it off just like that. Now, this is a good time to take your caliper. You don't need that up there. And on this caliper, you have two slides right here. On one on each side. You want to make sure you can move these by hand. Because if you can't, you're going to have a problem. What's going to happen? Your brakes are going to heat up. And it's going to mess your rotors up. So both of them slide good. That is great. Go to lean that to the side over there. Now, we got our brake pads here slide our brake pads off. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you a little trick, guys. I leave them brake pads right on. And what you're going to do now is we're going to get you a little mechanics wire. Why? Because what you want to do is hold this caliper up in the air. You do not, you want to try not to let the caliper rest down <clears throat> from the weight of the brake line. Because if you do, especially part of it is hose, you can mess that line up on the inside even though you don't see it. So let's get some wire and we're going to tie this caliper up right back all right guys we're back check this out now you can go get some mechanics wire and it costs you like four or five bucks for this little roll but i'm gonna tell you a little trick what i got here is actually welding wire that's right get it from harbor freight a little welding wire costs about 10 bucks and i got a whole spool of it and this stuff is easily to maneuver around so we're gonna wrap this tie this caliper up Then what you want to do is find you a place to, to mount it. Right, well, you know, we're going to go to our upper control arm right here. So we're going to bring that up here. Fish it through the upper control arm. Make 
sure it's nice and tight. Get that right out of the way. Caliper's out of the way. The next thing we're gonna do, now before we get the road off, we gotta remove the caliper bracket. That's why I didn't remove the brake pads, because now we can move the caliper bracket. And what you want to do here is get you a 21 millimeter or a 13 16. They're the exact same thing. And what you're going to have, you got one bolt right here, and go all the way up, and you got another one right there. And this one might be a little bit difficult to get to, so what you're going to probably have to do is turn the wheel till it's straight. But before we do that, I'm gonna get this one off right here. So, wait a minute, dang, it's over here. So, I got my 21 millimeter, got my half inch drive air gun, and what I got here is I like to lose a little, use a little wobble socket, half inch drive wobble, and that way, put it on, put my socket on, and it wobbles. All right, let's go over here, take off our bottom one. Perfect. All right, now what I'm gonna do is turn the wheel a little bit so I can get to that top one, all right? Bear back. All right, guys, what I did was put our wheel straight. And also what I did was, you know what? Scratch that idea about the welding wire unless you get some nice, double it up. This thing came loose. What I did was put my caliper right inside there. Now, I could have turned the wheel all the way to the left and got used my air gun to get this top bolt out. But I figured, hey, so a lot of guys don't have uh, air tools. So let's do this one with the ratchet. So what we're gonna do, is take our 21 millimeter socket with our half inch drive uh, ratchet, get this thing on, and our bolt is right there. So let's see if we can get in there. And this is kind of so I'm gonna have to still turn it a little bit to the, to the left. Let me turn that a little bit more to the left and we'll be right back. All right, turn it a little bit more to the left, got it. Yeah, there we go. Now these bolts might be kind of tight, so you know, get ready to. That's why I got my half inch, so you got a nice leverage on it. All right, we got it. So now we're gonna get this bolt off, and what we're gonna do is be careful because as you take it off, as you take off that last bolt, the caliper bracket is gonna pop right out of there. All right, we got our bolt off. Oh, oh man, look at, oh, the customer needed some brakes, really, huh? Look at, <laughs> those brakes are down there. <laughs> let's get that, let's get that pad out there and look at that, go more closely. All right, this is a, also a good time to let you know both bolts are the same size, same length, so you don't have to worry about them being crossed. The next thing we're gonna do, I guess we are gonna need a rotor. Let's get that rotor off. Now, first of all, what you wanna do is remove the dust cap close up in here. All right, two ways of doing this. One, I see a lot of guys use a pair of pliers and they grab this. You try not to want to do that because sometimes they squeeze it too much and they crimp this thing and then when you turn it, it's hitting up against the cotter pin inside. So if you do it and you can't take it off just like that, don't try it. Get you a little hammer with a screwdriver and this is great because this one is already out a little bit. So I can probably use my bigger screwdriver Put it in it and just twist it. Just go around. Right off. Perfect. The next thing you want to do is get you a pair of wire cutters. And we got a cotter pin right there. So what we're going to do is bend the cotter pin ends in. Straight out just enough. Then we're going to take the same wire cutters, go to the top, just work that cotter pin right out of there. Next you're gonna have a retaining washer, like a castle washer. Pop that right off. Now we go back to our pliers, and this bolt is not super tight, so don't be putting it back super tight. It is uh, just in there as soon as it stops right to the bearings, it's just turned a little bit more, and that's it. So this bolt right here, the nut right here, should come off pretty easy, just like that. Take it off. Now I'm gonna show you another little trick, guys. All right, 
Next thing we're gonna do is there's a washer right here. You wanna pay attention to that washer because that washer have a little tab in it. Pay attention to that because that goes on the spindle only one way. You got the bearing in there, you can just take karate chop the top of the rotor and the bearing will pop out a little bit. Now here's a little trick. Inside there you got an inner bearing and a seal. And what you want to do is take your nut, put it back up there. Not all the way, just enough. And you want to pull your rotor off, but let it hang, let it bend. Don't try to pull it off evenly, because what you're going to do is pop the inside bearing and the seal off at the same time. Just like that. So now both of them are done. Now you can reuse the seal and everything. Put that to the side. Take our nut back off. And we're gonna get ready to put this on. So let's go get our new rotor and everything. We're gonna repack the bearings and put this rotor and everything back together. Be right back. All right, guys, we're, give, we're gonna get ready to pack our bearings. But then I noticed something. First of all, this rotor, you can check this rotor is all messed up. Now look inside where the bearing goes. You see that discoloration right there? That means these bearings have not been getting a lot of grease and uh, they can definitely uh, be kind of bad right now. So, you know, I'm going I'm to talk to the customer. We're going to see if we can get some get some new bearings to go in here. This is not enough grease to go in here. This is not a lot of grease at all. So, uh, and you definitely want to make sure you get wheel bearing grease because just because it says all purpose around that, you want to get high temperature wheel bearing grease. So I'm going to talk to the customer and also let's go out here and check our paper towel and you can see what I mean. How the paper towel soaked up. The brake fluid coming out of there, so I'm gonna get ready to go change that also. All right, we'll talk to the customer and we'll be right back. All right, guys, the customer went to go get some uh, bearing grease, wheel bearing grease, and he's gonna try to get some inner and outer wheel bearings and the seals. So, in the meantime, what we're gonna do, we're gonna switch all, bring all our stuff over here to the right side, and we got it already turned, and we're gonna start taking apart this side. All right. Be right back. All right, guys, here we go. We're on the right side. Got the, turn, the wheel turned all the way to the left. All right, you tell me what's first. That's right. We're not going to use the screwdriver trick on this side. This time, we'll show you the, the trick of the C clamp. But first, we got our two T47 bolts holding on a caliper. So let's get our socket in here. And remember, make sure that socket is nice in there. And if you can, if you want, be an added security, get the socket in there and tap it a little bit with a hammer. That way it makes sure you clear, got it cleared out. Okay, pop that one loose. All right, let's go to our bottom one. And just like I said, you can put the screw there, put the uh, socket there, get your little hammer. Tap that in to make sure you got a good grip on that. All right, so let's take that off. All right, let's take those two bolts out and we'll be right back. All right, guys, let me back this camera up some. Hope you can see it. I don't know. This lighting ain't all that great in here. Heck no, it ain't all that great. All right, got our me mechanics wire. Let's, wow, this whole thing is, this whole thing over here is bent out of place. <laughs> let's get our caliper off. It looks like uh, kind of stuck here. Let's get us a screwdriver. Pop this off again. This thing is. You know, this is really uh stuck up here. Alright, let's get this thing off of here. And what we're gonna do is get our wire tie, hook it up someplace around here. Well, not wire tie, mechanics wire. Put it up. Let's tie this up to the to the upper control arm. All right, so let's tie that up. And we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got that out of the way. The next thing we're gonna do is get our caliper bracket out of the way. This, these things look like they're really bent up out of place, man. What the heck? They definitely look like they bent. 
get that off and look at that. Okay, we got our 21 millimeter. First, we're gonna get our go at the bottom, give a half inch drive air gun, get a little wobble socket. Probably can get to it without it. 21 millimeter, half inch drive. Let's get over here and get that bottom one out. Nope. Definitely need my wobble, or I can just use the ratchet. But I'm kind of lazy, so I like the air tools. Get that bottom one out of there. All right, and you know for the top one, we gotta turn it a little bit, and turn it just so we can get our ratchet up there. All right, so let me go turn that and get that top one out. Be right back. All right, we got our wheel, got it straightened out. Got my 21 millimeter half inch drive with my nice ratchet. Get in here and dang it, the hose in the way, man. out of there. I ain't liking the way these brake pad uh, clips look. They look kind of messed up. Get that off. Let's look at these clips. I don't know. Dang, this thing. Look at this one. That's all messed up, man. This, this, this customer gonna need new clips too. This ain't right. Oh, man. What? Sometimes when Customers call you to do part, do a job, man. You don't know what you're gonna get involved, what you're gonna get involved with. All right, so, and I also want to check out. We want to push back that pistons. I think there might be something wrong with that caliper or something. We're gonna check that out as well. Let's get this uh, dust shield off right here, using our screwdriver. Get our bigger screwdriver. Work this thing off. Okay. You know what's next? Get our wire cutters. Let's get a little bit closer in there. We can see this. All right. Bend these cotter pin. Bend that cotter pin down. Take it up. Perfect. Take off our castle washer because it looks like a castle. That's why. <laughs> All right. Take the nut off. Just want to see if that was kind of loose. Let's go ahead and spin that off. Pop that, do that little karate chop. Achha! Take off the washer. That <laughs> with the little uh, pin on it. Take off the inner bear, outer bearing. That's the outer wheel bearing. Take that off. Put the nut back on. Slide that rotor right off. Leave everything right up there, just like that. Take it off. Take our nut back off. Just that quick, guys. That's that was quickity quick. All right, we're gonna change our gloves and then we're gonna push them uh some pistons back in that caliper. All right. Matter of fact, while we before we do that, let's go up here and make sure. Yeah, we gotta change this. Things coming up there. So let's pull that out slowly. Yeah, hold it upside down. And I got some over here already. Right there. And we might be down enough. But we're gonna put one in there just in case. Alright? Be right back. Alright guys, we're ready to push this back. Now here's the here's the situation though. So if you got the other side apart, like we do. Sometimes you can start pushing these pistons back and while you're pushing these out, the other one over there, there's a, there's a chance of those coming out. So either you do one side at a time and put it back together or you do what I'm about to do. What you do is take, a, take one of the, the old brake pads, right? Get you a nice pair of vice grips or another seat clamp. Put it right up there. And bam, hold that right in the place. Let me get this. Open this up some more. Open this up some more. <laughs> Open it up too much. <laughs> it vanishes. All 
All right. Now that's going to hold that and make sure that doesn't come out. So then we're going to go back on the other side. this man so gonna be so upset <laughs> all right here we go let's uh unhook this get this out of here man, I ain't got time for this there we go all right bring our caliper down here Now, we're going to make sure our sliders are good. And this one's a little bit... There we go. All right, let's get this wire off of here. Now, next thing you want to do, you want to take your take one of the old brake pads. The part that's got the pad, you want to make sure you put that towards the piston. Then, get your C-clamp. Open that C-clamp up. Put it up there. And then you're going to slowly turn that in. See that? Pushing those pistons right back. You want to go slowly and keep checking the master cylinder. Now you notice how one is going back and the other one stands still. That's quite all right. What you do now, just open that up. Switch over to the other side. And do the same thing. Just like that. And just slowly push them back. All right, be right back. All right, guys, we're looking great here. We got the pistons pushed back. Now, I noticed on this slider right here, man, look at it, man. That's a, that slider is kind of difficult to move. So we're gonna have to move that. So what we're gonna do here, let's zoom in on this. Let's break this loose, show you a little trick. First you get some WD-40, what the heck, this is brake clean, it's not WD-40, what the heck man, why it's some, why, what the heck wrong with me, <laughs> alright, let's get some WD-40 with straw, be right back, alright, now we got some WD-40, and what we're going to do, let's push this back, because this thing is still slidable, what we're going to do, is get the straw into the boot, and we're going to try to get some WD-40 in there, There we go. Got that in there, and we start working that. Look at that, guys, just that quick. Look at that. Just that quick. That thing is ready to go. Now, I'm gonna go to the other side and do the same thing. If you're doing this, be careful. Do not rip that boot. All right, we're gonna get a little Spray in there and work that back and forth. That's great. You should be able to move it like that with no problem whatsoever. There we go. We're gonna work that back and forth. Oh yeah, look at dang I do that thing almost no thing started to come out of there, man. Thing moving so much now. Which brings us to our next thing. What we want to do here now is let that thing come out just like that like it's all the way to the other side we're gonna get a little grease and put in there all right go over here and get my little grease gun just a very small amount i'm gonna squeeze a little grease in there there we go make sure it's in push the pin all the way back there we go and just move it back and forth and let that grease work its way in there perfect look at that thing like brand new I'm moving this with hardly any effort and that's what you want and the other side is perfect already but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna stick some grease in there a little bit make sure that sliders be no problem also so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna get ready to clean up our spindles and the customer's still not back yet so wants to be waiting for a little bit. Bear back. 
All right, guys, we're waiting for the, still waiting for the customer to come back. And what we're gonna do here, we're gonna take us a rag. He's getting brand new grease too. We're gonna clean off these spindles. Get that old grease off of there, cause we're gonna put some brand new grease up here. Clean off back there where the, the seal goes. We're gonna do the other side. We're gonna clean up everything, get everything ready, get our rotors set up. Ready to put this back together. Be right back guys all right guys customers back got the bearing grease got the bearings and everything we're ready to go the first thing we we'll gonna do if you take out your new roller you're gonna see some kind of junk and stuff up there just get you a can of brake cleaner spray it clean it up and go over here and do that other side don't take much at all all right turn your rotor back over okay we're gonna do the other side and then after that, get your wheel bearing grease. We're going to be getting down and getting some greasy now. Be right back. All right, guys, we're on the right side. What we're going to do, I told the customer about the clips. He's going to take them back, take them brake pads back to Auto's Advance, where he got them from. And we ordered from Fisher Auto Parts. We're going to order our brake pads. It comes with the clips and all. Be great. All right, let's get this side together. This is a lot of greasing right here we got to do. First thing we're going to do, now don't be stingy with the grease, guys, because you don't, you do. Your bearing's going to mess up. Make sure you get some high temp disc brake wheel bearing grease when you're doing these okay check out all the other grease check it out the back it'll tell you it's not meant for disc brakes wheel bearing so what we're gonna do ready here we go should we have sylvia do this no way <laughs> all right take some grease Ugh. you're gonna lubricate the spindle guess you can't use a q-tip on that no they can't do the 007 on this one <laughs> be there forever all right that's done. The next thing you want to do, take some. Put inside the rotor. Again, don't be stingy. Put some inside the rotor. Great. This is messy. All right. Now, we got to grease our wheel bearings. There's two ways of doing the wheel bearings. One, you can do a, use a tool. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. But you have a grease gun. Or, for you guys that don't have the tool, you just don't got time to go out there and get no tool. I'm going to show you the nice... Wait, He's before you start. Huh? We'll be right back. Oh, we need a battery? Yeah. Dang. Alright, we'll be right back. Alright, we're back with a fresh battery. Put the grease in your hand like that. Just like that. Dang, this stuff is nasty. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. Alright, take your inner bearing grease. Inner bearing. Now what you want to do is if you look right between the gap, right between the, the rollers, you want the grease to get right in between there, all the way around. Just don't throw these bearings in there like that. You're gonna mess them up. So what you're gonna do is the old-fashioned way. You take your bearing like this, and what you're going to do is keep putting it like this, and keep going like that. Don't that hurt? No, nah, no, nah, because you're not putting a lot of pressure on it at all. It looks like you are. And then, if you get real close up there, you can see the grease actually coming between the bearings. Yeah. yeah. Alright, so what you do is keep on turning now. Keep on turning the bearing, and keep on... A little bit by a little bit, keep on walking around until you get that bearing. And it, and it's good because this customer got brand new grease, so the grease is still warm from in the store. So it's going in there nice and easy. Isn't there a better way to do this? Yep, I'm about to show you in a few minutes. And then, once you get it all like that, you take the outside, run it around, make sure. You Got some grease all on the outside and all, just like that. Set it down into the into the rotor. Now there's a big end and a small end to the bearing. The small end faces down. Push that down there like that. Just like that. Perfect. Get the rest of our grease. Put it right here, inside there. Pull our gloves off. Get some, get a box of gloves around with you. You're gonna be needing a lot of them. Get you some paper towels, a paper towel. You're just gonna wipe up around there, clean up around there a little bit. Next, get you another pair of gloves, and then we're gonna put our seal on. Well, better yet, guys, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna show you the, the other way of doing it. Get you another tool. Get to use the other one. A little bearing 
packer right here. Take the top off. This, this thing is like eight bucks. Do it like that. Take your bearing. Put it on there. They hit like that. Better yet, you know what, guys? My mistake. I mean, I'm gonna put that the wrong way. Turn that upside down like that. Now, check that. You see a little hole right down in there? That's where the grease is gonna come out at. So, you put that down like that. And for you, a lot of you guys, this is a lot. For you prima donnas, it's a lot easier. Bring the tool down. Bearings in there. Get you a grease gun. Hook it onto the top of it. Squeeze it. And if you're watching there, We'll keep on going till you see the grease come out. This thing takes a longer time, man. There it is. See the grease come out? Oh, yeah. I didn't see it. Is it inside? No, inside there. Yeah. That black stuff? Uh huh. That's the grease. Oh, why is it black when you one's brown? Different kind of wheel bearing grease. Oh, that was confusing. All right, so we got that. That's it. Done. You like that better? Cause no. like, why? Mm, you couldn't see it. But it's a lot more yeah, less, yeah. less messy, yeah. Huh? Isn't there another way? Yeah, another tool, but I ain't got the tool. Oh, no, so now we'll have to do that next time. Let's get our wheel seal. Nice wheel seal. Put our wheel seal up there, and of course, ugh. What happened? I got the wrong seal, man. The seal don't even fit in here, man. Look at... Oh, God, man. You know, customer get the wrong parts. Hey, I'm putting it back in the box, man. Customer got the wrong seal. So now, we get the other one. See, that fits up there nice and snug. That's what you want. Nice and snug. And what you want to do is get a little hammer, and we're going to knock that down to this level. Now if I can use I can use a socket. You wanna make sure walk that around. Perfect. Level all the way around. Gotta tell the customer he got that's messed up, but alright. Cover up our grease. We ain't gonna need this for a minute. Take our rotor and we're gonna put it up there. Let me get something. And let me just let me get a wipe this off. Let me get us another rag and clean this off, and I'll be right back. All right, let's take this rotor. We're gonna slowly pick it up, and we're gonna put it on the spindle. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Now the next thing we're gonna do, let's get our wheel bearing grease. Got our other bearing that's already packed up. It's okay if we mix the grease as long it's as long as they're wheel bearing grease. Again, disc brake wheel bearing. All right, want to put some on the sides. This is a messy job, so. All right. You said disc brake wheel bearings. Is there wheel bearing grease for? Brake shoes wheel bearing? Yeah, that's different kind of grease, so you want to make sure because this is high temp. All right, let's put our wheel bearing in there. Perfect. Look at that, guys. This is perfect. All right, let's start putting this stuff together. The next thing we're going to do is get our little washer with a little tab on it and make sure it lines up with that top tab on the spindle. Push that on. Perfect. Get the nut, bring the nut all the way on. Do not super tight this thing, because it's going up against bearings. So what you want to do, 
is put the put it on until it stops just like that and just a little bit more that's it perfect next thing we're gonna do put a little castle washer on and on this spindle there's a little hole right on the top where the cotter pin is going to go to so you got to make sure when you put this on that one of those castle things going to line up with it once they do you're good to go if you have a new cotter pin get a new cotter pin if you don't it's no problem of using the old one sometimes the old one might want to give you a little hard time Then you definitely gotta use a new one. Dang it, I should have just got you know what? I'm gonna get a new one. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tell you, tell you what, tell you what, let's let's bend this tab up a little bit. Yeah. All right, guys, forget this. I'm gonna go get a new one. Bear back. All right, got a new cotter pin. Thing slides right in there, no problem. Take the tabs and you bend them up sideways like that. The only thing this cotter pin does is stop that castle washer from moving, which stops the nut from moving. That is done. Next thing you wanna do, get your dust cap, put it up there. You could take a hammer and lightly tap it around. Take the rag, wipe off the excess grease, and that is done. Next, let's get our uh, caliper bracket and we're going to bolt that back on. We'll be right back. All right, here we go. We got some new brake pads coming down with the new clips. So this, I can care. I don't have to care less about. Let's get this on. Take this right here, and we're gonna slide it over the rotor. Let's get one of our 21 millimeter bolts. It goes right through here. It's gonna go right through here, just like that. And it's gonna let's get that started. Okay. Let me take the other one on the other side. Get that one started and I'll show you that one in a minute but let's go ahead and tighten this top one up now for this top one we had to use our 21 millimeter half inch drive with our half inch drive ratchet all right we're gonna tighten this up and then we're gonna turn the wheel all the way to the to the left to get that other one all right we'll be right back all right Got the wheel turned away to the left. Now we got our last bolt right down here. So this time I got my air ratchet, air gun. Get in here. Tighten that up. Great. Guys, that looks great. That looks great. Next thing we're going to do, get you a little wire brush here. See this right here? We're going to clean that up. Just scuff that a little bit. Just take off the extra rust. Now, let's get our brake pads. Now over here... You can see the customer went to Advance because Advance is now now owns CarQuest, so you can CarQuest part here. And we got some wherever, yeah, wherever they get them from. I don't know, but gold. This is gold, guys. And what's funny about it? They try to be nice and wrap each pad up in a piece of paper to make it look real good. Meanwhile, this is the one we got from Fisher. This is the professional braking technology. Silent stop. On here. I, I put these in here. They give you the new clips. The yeah, they come with the Q-tips to do the 007. <laughs> and got some nice brake pads. And it comes with the lubricant. That's what you want. You want a kit with the new new shield shims up there. So what we're going to do, we're going to open this up. Grab two of them out. And we're going to get ready to install. As a matter of fact, you can see they even look different than the original ones. These are much better. All right? So let's get ready to get these, put these on. We'll be right back. All right, guys. Let's put these clips on first. Now, there's going to be two different clips. One long one, one short one. What you want to do is make sure, and you can't put 
the short one on the long end up here it goes on the short end down here so what we're gonna do is just snap that into place perfect let's get our upper one snap that into place that is great the next thing we're gonna do is nothing <laughs> What we're gonna do here is next we gotta lubricate these sliders right here and we're gonna do the method called the 007 manual mechanic 007 he said instead of getting your hands all greasy and all get you a nice q-tip pull a lubricant up there on the slider that's it do not get on the nut on the rotor or you're going to be trying to stop and you're going straight through somebody's house. All right, let's do the top one. And then you'll be looking crazy in your face. Look at this watching somebody TV. <laughs> All right, that's great. Next thing we're going to do is get our brake pads. Put our brake pads into there. And they fit right up on the groove. This, this upper one sometimes it gets kind of stuck sometimes. This, it'll get there. There we go. That one in there. Let's get one on the inboard. Put that in there. That is perfect. Look at that. Silent stop. All right. The next thing we're gonna do is bring our caliper around. Now, what you want to do here? Now, remember, you see this opening in this cal this one down here. So, what you want to do is get your caliper out, and you wanna. Get the upper one in first. And watch, notice how the tab right here. Get this tab right here and this one right here. So you wanna make sure you get that upper one in there first like that. And then slide the bottom one in. Perfect. Get your two bolts, your T T T47 bolts. And you wanna start them by hand. Great. And once you get them started by hand, because you definitely want to get some thread started by hand, so you don't make sure you don't cross thread them. Then you got your T T47 torque socket with your 3H drive, 3H drive ratchet. And what we're going to do is go ahead and tighten up them two bolts. All right. So let's tighten that up. And then once we get these tightened up, we're going to turn the wheel straight. Then we're going to go to the the left side and put that side together. All right. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we are now on the left side. Get the wheel straightened out. Let's get right to it. First, do the messy part. Get it over with. Get some grease in there. Grease the spindle. Again, don't be cheesy with the grease. Or you're going to burn your bearings right out. Okay. Next, take some grease. Put it inside the rotor. All right, we're yeah, good to go. Next thing we we'll do, hey, while I got my hands here and all greasy, pull a little bit on my hands. the old-fashioned way let's pack these bearings now the, the customer went and got our uh, new bearings but they did not first they gave him the wrong one for the outer then he went to return and get another one they didn't have it so what we're gonna do is I'm using the outer bearing from the right side because that was in much better condition than one than one here on the left so I'm gonna be packing the old bearing on there all right, I got that bearing packed, nice and quick. Roll it around in some nice grease. The smaller end of it, down into the rotor. Done. Let's get our inner outer bearing, and then we're gonna pack that one. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're ready. Let's get our old wheel seal. Set it right there. Fits in there nice and snug. 
get our little hammer and we go around and tap that in there. All right, take our rotor, slide it on to the spindle. And you can see all that grease starting to come out. That's great. We know we got that greased up perfectly. Next thing you want to do, we got our packed outer bearing over here. Slide the bearing on. And then this grease that's coming out of here, you can just take that, wipe that off. Maybe we should have a paper towel or something around here. Get that cleaned up right here. In fact, let's change, take the gloves off. Yes, you go through, you're going to end up going through a lot of gloves with this job. Get some paper towels. Clean this off. That is looking perfect. All right, get some new gloves on. The next thing we're going to do is get that special washer. And you got to make sure the tab in on the in, inner ring of that washer lines up with that slot right there on the spindle. So put that on like that. Put that on. Perfect. Next thing you want to do is get the nut. Put it on. And again, do not be go crazy and super tightness or you will mess up the bearing. So what you want to do, get your pliers, turn it, as soon as it stops, snug it a little bit more, done, that's it. Clean that off, great, next. The castle washer. And this one looks like it's kind of got a tab that's in there that's bent. That tab is not supposed to bend. You want to make sure all those tabs are straight out. Then we're going to put it, put it on. And you want to make sure one of those grooves or openings will line up with that slot right there. So you just keep on turning it. And that one right there. Perfect. Get your new cotter pin. Put the cotter pin in. Bend the tabs from side to side. Easier to use your wire cutters. Bring them out side to side. Great. Great. Perfect. Get your dust cap. Put your dust cap on. Lightly tap, tap it with your hammer. Again, you don't want to beat this thing closed. Perfect. Next thing we're gonna do, we got our caliper bracket here. Got the old clips, even the old clips on this side is all messed up and bent. Take our old brake pad out. And see how hard this brake pad is coming out of here? It's not supposed to do that. Look at that. Dang. It got his mileage worse on them brakes. <laughs> <laughs> he made sure he gonna get his money worth. Take the new <laughs> take the new clips off. <laughs> and the clip is a little stubborn coming off. It's okay. It don't matter if you break those clips, mess these up. These are old anyway. Next thing we're gonna do is while we got it off, guys, you know what? Let's get it, let's get our let's get this uh, stuff out all this stuff out of the way. Let's uh take our gloves off and get our wire brush. And what we're gonna do is clean where the clips go. So we get no kind of interference in there. It's great, there we go. The next thing you can do is grab your two 21 millimeter bolts, again, or you can have use 13 16 You're gonna put that caliper bracket on. Remember, both bolts are the same size. And what are we gonna be here? Here we go. 
lower the caliper, lower the bracket over the rotor. Get one of our bolts to the top. Put that bolt in. And then to the other side, and I'm gonna just start this one, and I'm gonna turn the wheel all the way to the right. Then I'm gonna show you that one. But what I'm gonna do, let's get this one tightened up right now. Okay, 21 millimeter half inch drive with our half inch drive ratchet. And this is a little pressure on this one, make sure it's nice and tight. Grab our rotor, turn the wheel to the right. Then we got our last bolt right over here. And for this one, I'm gonna use my air gun with my one inch wobble, half inch wobble. Make it a lot quicker in there. Tighten that up. Next step, clips. Now remember, on your caliper bracket, one end is smaller than the other. So you wanna make sure you put the brackets in the right, right order. So up here we got the small one. So we're gonna go up here, snap that small one right into place. Go to the bottom one. Snap that right in the place. Perfect, that looks good. Next thing you wanna do is get your lubricant that come with the brake pads, or some of them. Put a little bit on the Q-tip, call it the 007. You wanna just put it right where the brake pads are gonna slide at, because without that, brake pads can get stuck, heat up, Cause the rotors to warp and just mess your brake pads up. That's great. All right, take our gloves off again. This time, I'm not gonna put new gloves on. Nice brand new brake pads. One thing I didn't say on the other side is when you get new brake pads, make sure on the back of them it has that uh, shim, the silencer shim. If not, there is a good chance that the brake pads, they, they rattle so much, vibrate so much, that it'll sound like a squeal, sound like you need brakes, but it's not, it's just these. The older brake pads that didn't have this had the spray or something you put on the back of the back of it and worked. All right, so we're gonna put this brake pad into here. So we can work this thing in here. Okay, that's one. Let me go to the other side. The other side in. Great. That thing look good. Okay. Last but not least. Our caliper. That hurt. Alright, first we got a wire right here we gotta take off. Take that wire off. Get our caliper, our pins, make sure our pins are both pushed down in. And let's go put this caliper on. Now, you wanna start with the big, wherever the big clip is, you wanna start with that. And what we're gonna do here is slide this on. Now, this side, this little part right here, you wanna make sure that's underneath there and this end is underneath the clip. So we wanna push that down. Let me make sure, hold on, make sure that, uh, make sure our caliper is not, I wanna make sure that brake hose is not twisted. Okay, it's good. Okay, let's push that on. Mm 
Notice how it's down there. It's hooked onto there. It's up under the clip. Push our pin in over here. Pop, slides right down. Perfect. Get our two T47 bolts. Start them off by hand. You definitely want to get about two or three threads started by hand, and that way you know it's not going cross threaded. All right, great, let's tighten these up and we'll be right back. All right guys, we got them tightened up. Everything is good to go. The next thing you wanna do is go up here, take our paper towel out and you can see it's soaked up. A lot of brake fluid. Let's get rid of that. Put the cap on the master cylinder. Now, don't put your tires on the car and take off down the road because if you do, you're not going to have no brakes. Then you're going to hit somebody and mess up. So what you got to do is, now you got to pump the brake pedal up because pumping the brake pedal up, put you, push those pistons back out so the brake pads can meet the rotor and be right there. I'm going to show you what happens. If you was the right, let me take this off. I'm going to show you what, hap what would happen if you got in the car right now and took off down the road. Right now, watch our brake pedal. You would step on the brakes, and look at that. Straight down to the floor, and you're not stopping. So what you gotta do is pump the brake pedal up. Perfect. Now, you can put your tires on. Now putting your tires on, when you go to tighten up the lugs on the tire, you wanna make sure that you don't tighten up one, two, three, four, five. Because a lot of times old rotors will have rust on it and then the wheel won't tighten up flush. So what you want to do is tighten in a star pattern. So what you want to do here is tighten up one, then cross over to two, three, four, five. That's the way you want to tighten it up. All right, let's clean all this mess up, get our tires on, and we'll be right back. All right, so today we worked on a 2000 Dodge Ram 1500. 3.9 engine and this van has 122,000 miles so that's how you do front brakes rotors and wheel bearings and all that good stuff so if you guys have any comments or questions you can post them below in the comment section or you can email timmy at tim at astralautorepairs.com hope you paid attention if not watch it again this is sylvia from astral auto repairs if we can repair it nobody can see you next time